and welcome back to the Dreamcast. I am your host, Denise Walsh. I combine science, scripture, and stories that will inspire you to dive deep, break through your own personal glass ceiling, and design a life of your dreams. Big, big welcome back to the Dreamcast. In today's interview, I am interviewing a mom on a mission. She has always been an entrepreneur. She's got big vision, big passion, and a heart to serve. And then she had kids, and that changed everything. And now she's on a mission to be the best in both worlds, an engaged, focused, loving mom, but yet not put her passion to the wayside. So she's focusing on her career and and igniting that fire inside by helping other moms do the same. Her expertise lies in coaching teams on learning how to receive in order to achieve. And I know that you'll be blessed by her experience and wisdom. So please welcome Tara Aldridge to the Dreamcast. Thank you so much for having me, Denise. I am so excited. So Tara messaged me on Facebook and and kind of randomly, you guys. And you know when you get a random email or message from someone, you're kind of like, Hmm, what's this about? Well, we ended up chatting and I realized like, whoa, we totally can be friends because she is somebody who is totally in, in alignment with my message and what we're doing here on the Dreamcast and, and beyond. And so she's got a big vision for herself, her business, her family. And I don't know. I'm just so grateful that you reached out to me because I got to be interviewed for Tara's show, which I'll be sending you guys a link to when that's live as well. So Tara, I know you've had several transitions within your life and changes and things like that to even get to where you are today. But I would love first for people to just get to know you a little bit. Tell us a little bit about your story and then we'll get into the nitty gritty of how you got to where you are. Yeah. Wow. That's so great. Okay. So I just, it's funny you ask me this because I just did a live yesterday on my Facebook on, you know, the transitions in life and how it's so important to embrace opportunity. And I've done that, Denise, ever since I really can remember. I mean, I don't know if you remember the babysitter club books, but I used to read those and I thought to myself, So I can't copy their babysitter club, but maybe I could have like a pet club. And that was like when I was seven. So I started this whole pet club and I did garage sales and I did lemonade stands. Like I've always been entrepreneurial. But, you know, as I grew, you know, grew up and through high school and through your first breakups and your relationships, you, you lose yourself a little bit from when you're a kid. And so when I turned 18, I got into a super toxic relationship. Like it gives me goosebumps. I don't talk about it often because it's A, so long ago and B, I don't like to talk about crap. But when I go back and I think it gives me goosebumps when it comes up because I'm so grateful to myself at my young 18 year old mind that I had it enough in my heart to say, I got to get out of this. How long were you in that relationship? Two years. Okay. Yeah, two years easy. that lasted. It's not. And when you're so young and it, that's such a transitional period of your life, 18 to 24 is huge. And um, I was headed down a very dark path where I was, you know, those inside voices. Maybe I don't know if you can relate to this at all, Denise. So forgive me if I'm just like projecting on you. But I was like, oh, I just want to get pregnant. Denise, I was 18. You know, like that's crazy talk. So I did, I am somewhere inside of me. I pulled it out of myself to run away and I went on cruise ships. And cruise ships is where I learned discipline. I learned, I pieced myself back together. You can imagine after being in an abusive relationship at such a young age. You, you know, do, you lose <laughs> yourself and you start to believe what they're saying. I was a totally battered woman. I don't know if you've mm. heard of battered syndrome, Mm -hmm. but I was smashed all over the place. So I had to pick up all those pieces. And when I got to the scary world of the international seas, I was all by myself. Yeah. What did you do there? What did you do on the cruises? So I actually was an art auctioneer. Oh, wow. You don't just walk on a cruise ship and say, hi, I'm an art auctioneer. There's a process. So I I was an assistant and I learned all the paperwork and the logistics. 
And then I went on to just be a killer salesperson. I killed it. I was so good. And then I went on to be a very successful auctioneer. And by the time I was 24, my transition sank in again. And I said, okay, this is great. Money's awesome. I'm the top of the company. I know sales inside and out, back of my hand, you know, millions and millions of dollars that I have. Yeah. I mean, I've been on cruises and I've seen that art and it is not cheap. No, it's not cheap. <laughs> it's not cheap. <laughs> and, and this was before the housing market crash. Mm-hmm. So people's income was like disposable, right? Like anybody could get credit. It was crazy. But anyway, so um, when I turned 24, I was at the height of my game. And again, I just really um, pat myself on the back here. And I think that's important is that we really acknowledge when we do the hard stuff, you know, when we say, you know what, T, that's what I call myself, T. <laughs> Because I, I talk to myself in the mirror. Yeah, you should, right? You know we what? all should. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I say, you know what, T, that was hard. Good for you. Ooh, and I like that. So, yeah. And so I left cruise ships at the height of my game. And it, was, it wasn't easy. Yeah. So what, did you know what you were going to do next? Or you just no. knew you were ready? I didn't have any clue. Okay. And that's another thing that is so awesome about me. I never have a clue. I just do it. I just throw things against the wall and see if they stick. And so when I left cruise ships, I could go anywhere in the world, essentially. I mean, visa permitted and me being allowed to be in the country, but essentially I had six months, I could really go and do whatever I wanted. So I picked Vancouver, uh, Canada. I went there and I said, you know what? I'm just going to call this home for a little bit. And it ended up being eight years. And I started a, a production company there. And I, that's when I went down my media my broadcast media company that I started. And that's just a whole, whole other thing that brought me to where I am today. Wow. Okay. So you, when you started your broadcast media company, did you have any experience with that? No, you don't need experience <laughs> to do anything. So this is my thing. So I have a nanny and she's a millennial and this, she's like so stuck on going to school and all this. And I love school. School is great. But you know what? School was not for me, girlfriend. I hated school. I did not thrive in school. And not because I'm not smart, but because I just can't focus on somebody talking to me like this and it retain any of it. I can't do it. So I have found different ways in my life to teach myself. I learn as I launch. And that is what I tell all of my clients. Get over the fear, okay? Because you're not going to know anything as we go. We're going to learn as we launch. And if you're not, you know, comfortable in that, we'll start making you comfortable there because there's no other way to do it when you're with me. Well, and the only other thing is to not do anything, you know, because you will never know enough. I mean, I think we all have to take action and and learn as we go because even book knowledge isn't the same as actual experience. And that trumps everything all the time. So... Before we get into your broadcasting career, why did you choose that? I have visions and dreams and they've always been huge and I've always really tapped into them. My dad comes from a multi-level marketing. I'm a multi-level marketing baby is what I call myself. Um, My dad started in Amway and moved on to Monavi and I think Quickstar was somewhere in there. And then, you know, so, so you know how that is with multi-level marketing and network marketing, the vision and the dream is like, key. It's everything. And so I grew up making vision boards. Our fridge was plastered with private yachts and fancy vacations. And we had nothing, Denise. My, you know, we had nothing. My family was, we were poor. And so this was such a beautiful escape, the, you know, being able to dream. And so I naturally cultivated this ability to, and my, I thank my dad for that to always stay connected to what I wanted. And so I always envisioned myself speaking publicly. I never knew what it looked like. I didn't even really know what I was saying in my vision. I just knew I was speaking. I was in front of people and I was making an impact. So as you can, you know, going from my whole transitional career, I started as an art auctioneer. You know, I was hosting art auctions and seminars six times a week. And I was on a platform and I was in front of people, but it wasn't filling my message. Mm -hmm. And then with my media company, 
I was in public markets. It's very boring. And it was hard to learn <laughs> because there's a lot of ins and outs to the stock market. But thankfully, I've got my wits about me and a big, huge brain. So I was able to learn a lot about public markets, but it was so boring. So when I met my now fiance, he really gave me permission to step into myself as slowly as needed to be. Does that make sense? Well, it sounds like you take action quickly. And so for him to say you could evolve is a little bit different than jumping. You know what I mean? Beautiful. Love that. So it was his idea, Tara, get out of public markets. It's not your passion. What's your passion? And so we met with a PR company who said, Tara, you need to be in Hollywood. And I was like, yes, I do. (laughs) That was speaking right to my heart. So we went, we did all the meetings, all that we met a whole bunch of directors. I read a ton of scripts and not that I was going to be an actor, but that we were going to fund motion pictures. And so we actually started to put together this massive deal out of China, which eventually fell through because it's not easy to do um, international borders deals like that, especially when they're like $200 billion. So um, we put it aside because I got pregnant. Aww. That changes yeah. everything, doesn't it? Yes. It, uh, it was the change for me that, that made me the most uncomfortable, to be honest. Okay. So you are a visionary. And you know, I I did not grow up in a network marketing or visionary family. My dad was an accountant. My mom was a stay-at-home mom. And so I was very black and white, go to school, work for 50 years, retire, you know. And so being in a network marketing company for over 11 years now, I'm so excited about how your family and and the the lessons they learned throughout that industry impacted you as a child. Cause it makes me think, Oh my gosh, my kids are picking up on what we're doing, but you've got oh, a big they vision. Totally are. <laughs> they are. Yes, I know. Absolutely. It's the best education I received as a child. This is totally off topic, Denise, but just to like kind of give you some excitement is I did a placement test when I was in the 10th grade for where my math level was at. I was at a grade three math level, but you know what I could do? I could dream huge. (laughs) And that was worth way more to me than understanding algebra and whatever else. Yeah, no, you're exactly. That's the thing is when you know what you want, the how can figure itself out. And so you've cultivated this vision. You knew you wanted to make an impact. You knew you wanted to speak. You've got that action first mentality, which I just so connect with because I do a lot of things I don't know how to do. I like put it on the calendar and then I'm then it gives me a deadline to figure it out. But okay, but then you had a baby. So tell me about that transition. I was so excited when I found out I was pregnant. I loved my pregnancy. My birth was beautiful. And then I became a mom and I just felt this overwhelming sensation of complete and utter joy. I had no postpartum. But then, you know, Cooper, who's my son, my firstborn, he became eight months, nine months old. And I was like, okay, so he's going to be a baby for another three years. What am I supposed to do? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? I was dying inside. Life's forever changed. And at some point, and I think even in those years or in that first year, especially you're like, will it ever be the same? (laughs) What did you do? Because you still had those big dreams, but yet life was different. Well, I'll tell you what I did. And in hindsight, I just I haven't gotten to the point where I'm like, okay, T, like it was a, it was a moment. Cause I'm still kind of annoyed at myself for doing this. I started to pity myself. I started to feel like, you know what, Tara, you get to be a stay at home mom. And a lot of my friends and people that I know, women, you know, they had to take maternity leave and you should feel so grateful. You get to be a stay at home mom. And I sat in that for a while and I resented it and I was very uncomfortable and I started dabbling in a few things, you know, photography and, you know, I did, I did some, some media work, some private contracts for people that I knew just to, you know, keep myself, my juices flowing, but none of this was speaking to my heart and to my message. Hmm. So when did you decide something needed to change? Well, I knew the entire time something needed to change, but when I took action, maybe six months ago. Okay. 
And how old is your son now? He is just about four. He'll be four in a couple of weeks, but I have another little girl. She is 16 months. Okay. So, yeah. so yes, you've been a little bit busy and distracted and, but it seems like too, I mean, you, you have these big dreams and then the baby comes and you love them, but yet you don't want to put your dreams aside. And you mm-hmm. did that for a little bit, which may have been necessary and it's just a season, right? But now you're ready to step into who you really want to be. And, and that's being good at both. Yes. And I couldn't be where I'm at today had I not had my children because the level of confidence that comes with having two babies, you, you literally step into the realm of being a superhero because moms are amazing. Yeah. There's so I couldn't have done it without them. So six months ago, you said, all right, I need to um, get, keep your juices flowing in this vision. You wanted to do, do more. Tell me about that transition. Right. So I didn't know what I wanted to do. Okay. So yeah, <laughs> still like make an impact. So this yeah. time I was really, really <laughs> stuck and I had the influence of other people saying, Tara, you know, oh, you're a mom, this, that. And I really had to put my blinders on because I know that in life, if you want to move and you want to shake and you want to do it fast, nobody around you can have any influence on what you're doing. So um, I hired a coach. That's I hired two coaches. <laughs> I hired a spiritual coach and I hired a business coach and we hit it hard. I got real with my relationship with God. I got real with my faults. I got real with letting go of my guilt. And I got real about getting real, like sitting here on this call with you being heart open, you know, And that's what I tell my clients. You need to get heart opened Mm -hmm. because nothing happens when you're clammed up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so true. And even though you love your babies, um, there was a part of you that felt like it was restless and stirring inside. So is there anything that your coaches, like any aha moment you had throughout the last six months that flipped the switch for you that said, this is what I want next? I've had so many. Denise, to name, you know, I did a two day seminar with Jennifer Jade and my aha moment was at the very, very, very end of her program. There were a couple other coaches in the room and I had no idea that I wanted to be a coach. And I, I knew that I was already doing it naturally. I knew that I had a sales process that I'd been teaching for years. I just never really considered myself a coach. I just was telling people what I knew about and what I knew worked. Um, but at the end of this program, there were a couple other coaches in the program. And Jennifer is just this amazing coach. It just came out of me. Like I couldn't even control it. And I just blurted out for the whole room to hear, I want to be a coach. And... <laughs> Yeah, it was weird. And Jennifer looked at me and she goes, well, yeah, duh. Isn't that what you're doing here? Uh, So that was a huge aha moment for me because, and I actually just did a a Facebook live about this a couple days ago, um, is our blind spots mm. and how important it is to allow people to share with us what is in our blind spot. Stop being so defensive. Now, I also preface, do not let anybody tell you who to be, where to go, and how to do it, because that doesn't work. But be open to somebody saying, hey, listen, did you know this about yourself? Because it's in their blind spot. Well, and especially if it's somebody you like, know, and trust, and they've got your best interest at heart. So you walk in the room, she gets to know you, and she sees this in you already, even before you did. Yeah. She's like, well, yeah. She even said, duh. Is that what you're doing here? Why did you think you went to that event? Because I had no idea. I was just following the opportunity. Mm. I'm a yes person. So Jennifer invited me. I, I saw Facebook Live. It resonated with me of hers. I called her. We talked for an hour. She invited me to her event. I said, yes. She said, it's in two months. It's a thousand dollars. Do you want to come? I said, sure. I signed up, not even knowing if I would actually show up. 
but I did. And it was amazing. And it sent me down this new trajectory that has just blown my mind, blown my fiance's mind. He's like, who are you? I love it. (laughs) So before we go into what you're doing now, you said step into yourself slowly and evolve. What does that mean to you? Yes. So sometimes sitting back, looking at what's going on around you and embracing it, acknowledging it that it's happening and then letting it go allows for clarity, right? Because we have so many things whirling and twirling in our minds all the time and the energies around us, it just gets kind of hectic and chaotic. And how are you supposed to build a business or a relationship or a family based on whirling and twirling energy. It just, it's not, uh, that, that's not going to be successful. So being able to acknowledge all of that, that it's there and give it permission to leave, then you can be clear. Mm-hmm. So when I was able to be clear and quiet and still, that's when I found that my action could maybe not be so full force and I could go a little bit more effortlessly into it. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. I love that. So what are you doing now? Mm. Well, now, and this, you know, when, when we do what we're supposed to do, it happens. It just happens. So I have a full roster of clients. I coach them from some of my clients. All we're really working on is reigniting the dream because not everybody was taught to dream. So Some of my clients, I'm teaching them how to dream, to reignite that passion and that fire. And then we cultivate it and we bring it up that it's so big, it's right in front of their face and we brand it and we launch it. So that whole process takes about six weeks. So I I, I sign up for six weeks and then we go from one-on-one coaching to there. It's a module-based program. But my one-on-one clients... We're hitting business hard. We are looking at attraction marketing. We are doing email campaigns. We are tweaking their brands because sometimes they're a little off. And you know what we're doing, Denise? We're being real with each other. We create a very safe place where we can talk about matters of the heart, acknowledge them, release them, and move back to the business. Mm, that's beautiful. So yes, you're creating a space for people to connect with themselves again, reignite their own fire and then put it on their calendar and create that action. Yeah, that's exactly what we're doing. And it's working. Awesome. It's working. So you, what is your business called? TaraOldridge.com. Okay. I don't have any fancy frills, no gimmicks. It's just me show up. I mean, I have a couple programs. My first program, my six week program is called pre-flight. Okay. Ooh, I like that. Now, I want to hear about when you were being in mom mode and kind of allowing your dreams to fade a little bit, which I think a lot of people have experienced for sure. You have a bit of guilt and resentment. I mean, you're still healing through that, but how does it feel now that you've taken action on that fire that's in your belly? If I'm being honest, I still feel guilty. Okay, tell me more. I feel guilty because we've hired a nanny who you know, I'm fortunate we're able to do these things, but I feel guilty. I feel guilt. I, you know, I do breakfast, I do dinner. I, but I'm not at the park right now playing with my kids, you know, somebody else is. And my kids cry when they're not with me because they're used to being with me all the time. So I do feel guilt. But the best thing about that is I recognize it. And my kids are on their own journey. We all have our purpose here on life. And my purpose was not to huddle over my children, micromanage them and make sure that I get in on every single activity. That was not my purpose. And I don't think that it's serving them for me to do that because I am one heck of a woman. And if I can exemplify that for my children, that is much better than kissing every single boo-boo. Mm-hmm. And you're at home right now, right? I'm at home. Yeah, I went yeah, from you're home. You're still like you're I'm still here. home. Yeah, I have a nanny, and she's here right now, and I'm also at home, and so it can be yeah. the best of both worlds. Thank you for saying that. I love that. <laughs> I <feel better. laughs> 
But I think I do. I think that we, you know, it's one of those things when you have kids and you, you love them, but you still have your own desires and dreams. And we can be a mom and feel guilty and resentful that we're not pursuing our dreams and we can pursue our dreams and then feel guilt that we're not being a mom. So how do you reconcile that? That's a good question. It's just one of those things that you have to push through and acknowledge that it's there and let it go. Like we can't dwell on everything. I tell my clients that all the time. We're not going to spend this call dwelling on crap because that's not productive. So let's acknowledge that it's there, release it, and let's move on from this because it's not real. The only things that are real are the things that we attach ourselves to. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It's so true. And I feel like some of the things we attach ourselves to, and this could be like a whole nother call is our experience growing up and what's quote unquote, right, wrong, shoulds, all of those things. I know when I was growing through this myself, I would think about my mom who was a stay at home mom and did not work outside of the home or in the home or anything. And I had all these expectations of what I needed to be as a mom. And then I realized that I'm different from my mom. And it's just not, neither is right or wrong, but I don't have to have those expectations didn't fit for me. And so I had to separate, okay, well, what does my motherhood look like? You know, I want adventure and I want my kids to experience things and all of the things, but it was just, I, once I realized that really these shoulds came from my childhood and what I experienced and that they didn't quite fit with my life today, I was able to create a new experience for myself. 100%. I just took on a client two weeks ago that had the same thing. And we spent our first call talking about her mom. And the second call, I told her, listen, you shared with me in the beginning that you've been going to therapy for 10 years for your mom. Okay. Go back to therapy if you want. But right now, the conversation about mom stops. Mm-hmm. It's We're time to create a new story. A yeah. Create new story. new story and give mom a break. Let it go. Move on. You're not being the best you can be either. Okay. So let's go. <laughs> it's true. We sometimes allow our past to influence us and we don't even really realize it. So I think what you said earlier of recognizing it, acknowledging it, and then deciding what's next for you, you get to decide that. I just did a, a YouTube video today about uh, creating a new story. And when you've got those old thought patterns that are tied to negative emotion, we've just got to say done and create something new for ourselves so we can move forward. And it sounds so simple because it is. Yeah. Like maybe you got really hurt when you were young, but you're not young anymore. So disconnect from it and go. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. So tell me about your new vision. Ooh, which one? <laughs> My new vision. Okay, house on a hill, you know. <laughs> no, you know what? To be honest, um, I have everything that was ever on my vision board, was ever on my fridge. I got the man, I got the kids, I got the house, you know, we've got it all. So life is blessed. And so the new vision is to embrace and serve and love on as many women that were like me, feeling sorry for myself, as many of those women as I can. My vision is impact. Mm, Yes. And I think that you already are. TaraOldridge.com. Definitely check out all of her programs and coaching options. And if you are at a place where you're in a rut, where you are stuck, where you are ready for something new, but you might need either a hand to hold or a kick in the butt, (laughs) I think Tara can help provide that. (laughs) You know, one last thing is I have a thing, a a quiz on my website. It's called Cut the Crap. (laughs) And uh, it walks you through the lies that you might be telling yourself. Mm. And and again, is that a blind spot we might be having? 100%. Okay. And, and the voice inside of our head and all that garbage that goes on up there. You know, it's time to cut that out. Cut the crap. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. As you guys can see, like she's speaking my language and um, definitely a connection that we'll continue to cultivate. So I want to ask one more question. You've created, like you've had success in anything that you touch, certainly your own ups and downs and, and changes and transitions. But 
now in this new place where you've got vision and you, you've, your fire is lit and you're, you're taking action and it feels good, what is one thing you do every day that you couldn't live without? Oh boy. I, the first thing that popped into my mind, if I'm being honest, is my coffee. <laughs> I have one <laughs> coffee every day. And I don't, you know, Denise, I, I get a little bit uneasy when I hear all these people who have these morning rituals and all of these things that they do because I just don't have that. Um, I make my bed. I make sure that I accomplish that goal in the morning. But you know what I couldn't live without is my ability to love on me. And I've practiced it for so many years now that I don't even have to stand in the mirror, even though I do. I mentioned that I do. I do talk to myself in the mirror. You know, I give myself kudos all the time. But to be able to internally love myself is something that is so invaluable to me. And I I need it every day. My self-love. Yes. I think so many of us need to practice that skill. Mm-hmm. until it becomes natural. And it does. It, it's not, you know, it becomes a, a new recording in your mind when you practice it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So what's one way that you practice, or maybe you did in the past that now it's more of a habit? Mirror talk, mirror talk, mirror talk, mirror talk, stand in front of the mirror. And the reason why people don't do this is because it's awkward. It's uncomfortable and you feel silly, but you know what? It works. Okay. I'm going to try it. I'm scared. (laughs) Nerve wracking. Do it. So what do you say to yourself in the mirror? Well, take the cut the crap quiz and find out what your lie is. Okay. And then I always start with I am. So for example, one of the lies that people tell themselves is that they need this degree or so many people following them on Instagram and Facebook before they can. So that's called the validation lie. So um, you constantly need outside resources or sources to tell you that you are enough. So this one is you stand in front of the mirror and you say over and over again, I put 15 on it, but do it as many times as you can. If you can get to 10, like it, it's, it's not, it's not easy at first. You say, I am enough. And that just gave me goosebumps. With conviction. Do you guys hear that conviction? Looking in your eyes. I am enough. I am enough. And it will make you uneasy because you don't believe it. And then eventually you do. And then you do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, cool. Thank you so much for sharing with us today, your story, your vision and your energy. Is there anything else that's brewing that you want to make sure to mention? Just be grateful, be grateful and love each other. (laughs) Self-love, love each other. I think that when we live in that space with our heart open, like you mentioned, the possibilities are endless. So thank you again. Love you, girl. Thank you so much for listening today. Head over to denisewalsh.com. Enter your email to subscribe to our list and I'll be sending out an early bird special coupon. 50% off, in fact, of the Dream Life Workbook when it is launched in just a few months. So if you want to have first dibs, let's get your name on that list. Thanks again. I so appreciate you and remember to dream big.